something little spoken about but posing significant health concerns are allergies and immune system disorders. About 30 to 40 percent of the world's population is affected by allergic conditions, and asthma, a very common immune related condition, affects about 81 million children worldwide. On Let's Talk today is Professor Suranjit Seniviratna, a distinguished expert in allergology and immunology, a consultant in clinical immunology and allergy at the Royal Free Hospital and University College London, and he directs the Centre for Mast Cell Disorders. Additionally, he is the president of the UK Sri Lanka Immunology Foundation, contributing significantly to immunology education in Sri Lanka. Suranjit, so welcome to the show. Uh, just to start off, what are the most prevalent allergic and immunological disorders currently observed here in Sri Lanka? So, when it comes to allergic disorders, it is in relation to uh, what we inhale. That's house dust mite allergy, pet allergy, mold, cockroach allergy, cockroach related allergy. When it comes to the next uh, group of conditions, are the food allergies. And the third group is the med are the medication allergies, including a whole range of drugs, antibiotics, and a group of drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They are really not allergies, but sensitive, but we take it as similar manifestations. So what has contributed significantly to the increase in both allergies and immune disorders? The lifestyle factors are the most, most important uh, thing because when I went over to the UK in 1999, when I went to do my PhD, if ever I offered to do a talk on allergic disorders or autoimmune disorders at that time, uh, everyone said, no, that's not a big problem in Sri Lanka. And then our lifestyle changed. It, it uh, turned from a sort of our children were getting out, running around, uh, not always traveling by car. They were eating properly, eating at home, not uh, sort of the, uh, uh, outsourcing the kitchen to, to outside. So the lifestyle uh, factor, the chair, and then we have got into apartments, small gardens, ACs come in, windows are closed. So a whole range of factors have uh, contributed to this increase in allergy. What recent advancements are there in immunology for treating disorders? I mean, immunotherapy has been around for over 100 years because immunotherapy was started at St. Mary's Hospital in London. It was mainly for uh, sort of the pollen allergies, etc., and for bee and wasp venom allergy, but that was injectable and you had adverse effects, problems for the patient to come and get it. Uh, but now we use something called sublingual immunotherapy that is put in the uh, tablet under the tongue and you do it every day for three years. So that's a big advance. And for the group of patients who have very, very severe allergies, because there is a group uh, who take a lot of the healthcare resources. Most people have mild allergies who can easily manage them. But those who that, uh, get into hospital regularly who have to take a lot of drugs in that group we have another uh, treatment advance called uh, where we use biologic treatment that's a special group of uh, drugs injectable under the skin and that is a big advance in the very very severe asthmatics and those with very severe allergies or anaphylaxis what role does genetic predisposition play in the development of autoimmune disease. Like any condition like uh, autoimmune or allergic disorders, genetics definitely comes in. So if you have a parent or two parents who have an allergic, uh, who has an allergic autoimmune disease, definitely it has a contribution towards the, the child getting the, uh, the allergic autoimmune disease. But in addition, it's a combination of genetic uh, characteristics together with environmental factor. That's, that interaction is important. But the environment can alter some of the elements in the gene. That is, uh, we, we use this term called epigenetics. It's just technical, but the gene, the way it behaves can be affected by the environment. So it's a combination of the two. An example of that? I, I mean, the, our lifestyles, right? The, our lifestyle, uh, the way we live, the, I mean, fast food, etc., can be responsible for changing how the gene behaves 
and uh, in a certain environment, when you have an uh, allergen trigger or autoimmune trigger, normally would have not reacted to that. But in this situation with the environment, say uh, pollution, climate change, etc., coming into the into the into the equation, low vitamin D levels, etc., that can affect how the gene behaves. How has COVID impacted all this? But we learned a lot of advances for sort of preventing disorders. New vaccines are coming. I mean, the vaccine uh, sort of scenario will improve a lot for chronic infections and cancers. That's that's the big, big uh, advance that is going to come in because cancers which are not treatable are now certain vaccines are being trialed for those ca for cancer, which the knowledge came from uh, uh, the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, despite it having a big, big effect on around the world. How can early life sort of intervention uh, help or reduce the risk of allergies in later years? This hygiene hypothesis that you have, the, the typical hygiene have, because they found that people living in Switzerland, where they were living in farms, their children were having less allergy than those that live in the cities. So that was the first uh, signal to that about, you know, too, being too hygienic could increase the risk of uh, the immune system going off the rails. Uh, then what happened was in Israel that uh, the Jewish children who were living in Israel, as opposed to London, you found that peanut was given very early in life to the Israel uh, to children living in Israel while they were delayed in the UK. And they found that the risk of peanut allergy is very much high in children living in London. So now you do not hold back certain foods. You don't previously when the mother was pregnant, you didn't give them nuts or you you held back nuts from children, but you don't do that because by doing that you would cause more damage rather than or cause the a higher risk of allergies. What do you think needs to be done or what more needs to be done to improve public awareness, to improve education in allergy prevention and also managing it? It's people who are dealing with allergy across the board. It's not only doctors, it has to be nurses, it has to be teachers, it has to be a whole range of healthcare person, other people talking about it, talking in a way that people can understand. Because if you come and give the highest, highest blown theory, nobody will understand what is happening. And this is what you should do. Don't, I mean, what I tell my in the clinic, I say, you know, you can't try to prevent a child having any infection because that is not good for the immune system. You have to develop them I and you can't. So trying to be too clean is not the ultimate goal in life. I mean, that, that's because you can cause other conditions later on in life. How do lifestyle factors, diet, exercise, the environment, all impact the immune system's health as well as susceptibility to allergies? Environment is absolutely key because if you look at it, we carry three kilograms of bacteria in our gut. There's no reason for us to carry three kilograms of bacteria if they're not doing something. And the microbiome, as we call it. So they are talk continuously talking with the immune system, influencing those immune cells and the way they behave. And those, that is one thing. So that is why antibiotic overuse, antibiotic misuse is so bad because it affects that crosstalk. Then when it comes to exercise and uh, sort of nutrition, if you're eating every the things that are wrong, you don't have your vitamin D levels at the correct level, you are not exercising, you're putting a big strain on the immune system because the immune system has to then do things which it should not be doing when the primary goal of the immune system should be to keep the person safe from dangerous viruses, bacteria and fungi. But if it is doing other things like reducing inflammation because you're eating badly, etc., then you're just wasting that immune resource. If you're looking at the allergies that Sri Lankans had, what are the uh, allergies with the highest prevalence? The thing is that our houses have changed, you know, people are living in more confined areas and windows are closed, ACs are on, ACs are directly on the bed, mold is accumulating, dust is accumulating, people are putting carpets, start to have the wall to wall carpet. And things have really changed. Children are spending long periods of time on sitting on cities rather than you know, going out and play. So house dust mite allergy is a big problem. Uh, and it's the dust mite that is found in all houses. But 
what we give advice how to reduce that exposure. Secondly, it is mold allergy, another important uh, allergen that can occur here, and cockroach allergy. So those three are very, very important. Uh, when it comes to food allergies, the pattern is different from the UK and here. Uh, there we have a lot of peanut allergy. Here it is other other legumes and cashew nut, etc. Prawns, crab, uh, sort of fish is a, n another issue. Beef allergy is an issue in Sri Lanka, which we don't see so much there. It, it is a problem. And that has an influence because when it comes to certain uh, components, it can be present in vaccines. So you have to be careful. So those are the different parts. When it comes to drug allergies, I think uh, penicillin, uh, th that group of drugs, or in NSAIDs. And the important thing is I always tell patients, don't go to your doctor and say, I am allergic to medicines, because then that doctor doesn't give any medicine. You know what is, they speak to somebody, discuss it and know what the medicines are, or at least some idea, so that the other alternative drugs can be used at that. How would you advise a household to treat a person with, say, a mild allergy or something that is almost uh, sort of life threatening. So mild allergy, I mean, everyone would know. I mean, people will run through the antihistamine, et cetera, and give that. But try to, if you uh, say a rash or sneezing in the morning, et cetera, you can do an antihistamine and that will settle. But if it is more chronic and if it persists for longer, then it is important to be assessed. There are other allergies where they get uh, sort of multiple lumps on their skin or wheels or hives. So palo, as uh, people would call it, or if they get wheezing, etc., then getting the appropriate treatment rather than just taking prednisolone or steroids and just getting it uh, uh, under control for th that period of time, but then get a management plan and then stick to the treatment plan so that they will get it under control. Kaleidoscope is on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Remember to subscribe, follow, and like us for more.